Hello and welcome back to BioClass Bytes. In this video, we are going to talk about the formation of the universe, the Big Bang. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. These are the unit and lesson titles for this video series. So for Unit 1, Origin and Structure of the Earth, we have the formation of the universe, the Big Bang, alternative theories on the origin of the universe, the Milky Way galaxy and the solar system, Earth as a system, Earth's internal structures, and Earth's sphere interactions. For this video, we are going to focus on the formation of the universe, the Big Bang. The universe comprises everything that physically exists. It is the entirety of space and time, all forms of matter, energy, and momentum, and the physical laws and constants that govern them. This is a higher resolution image of, taken from the Hubble Space Telescope that shows us all these galaxies in different ages, sizes, shapes, and colors. We all know that galaxies are made up of millions and billions of stars, but in this image, you can see they're so small and there's so many. This, is, uh, this shows us how big the observable universe um, actually is. I recommend that you visit this website from National Geographic and this video from their YouTube channel, Origins of the Universe 101. I will provide the links to the website and video in the, in the description below. Current interpretations of astronomical observations tells us that the age of the universe is around 13.73 billion years and that the diameter of the observable universe is at least 93 billion light years. Um, please be reminded that year is a unit of time while light year is a unit of distance. So um, light year is the distance light can travel within a year. The universe is believed to be mostly made up of dark energy and matter, around 70% for dark energy and 25% for dark matter. They are known uh, as, they are called dark uh, because they do not interact with any, um, any electromagnetic fields and um, it makes them vis difficult to be observed. So they are called dark in that aspect. Um, and they are also poorly understood but, but we are still constantly researching about them. Um, only 4% of the entire universe is made up of ordinary matter. So that's the matter we know, which are made up of atoms and molecules. I also recommend that you watch this video from It's Okay to Be Smart entitled, Why is the Universe So Empty? I will provide the link in the description below. You must have tackled this lesson in grade 10. In physics, the speed of light is a fundamental physical constant. This is the speed at which light and all electromagnetic radiation travel in a perfect vacuum. So they estimate the speed of light in a vacuum to be around 300,000 kilometers per second. In theory, nothing can travel faster than, this, than light. Um, light is the fastest thing that can travel in the universe. Even if you could travel with the speed of light, you can go around the Earth 7.5 times in one second. This constant, the speed of light, is significant um, because it allows scientists to predict theories uh, and understand and study relativity, space-time, astronomy, space travel, and other fields. This GIF shows us a beam of light traveling between the Earth and Moon, and that's around 384,000 kilometers in 1.25 seconds. They say that light coming from the Sun takes 8 minutes to reach our planet. I recommend this video from TED Ed entitled Light Seconds, Light Years, Light Centuries, How to Measure Extreme Dis Distances. I will provide the link in the description below. This video also still from TED Ed, What Light Can Teach Us About the Universe, linked in the description below. And What If You Traveled Faster Than the Speed of Light, again linked in the description below. When it comes to the origin of the universe, the Big Bang Theory and its related theories are still the dominant um, scientific hypothesis we have at the moment. As used by cosmologists, it generally refers to the idea that the universe expanded. Okay, let's correct the misconception. Nothing exploded, but something expanded from a primordial hot and dense initial condition. So this is that um, period of singularity, the moment wherein the expansion happened, and it continues to expand up to this day. 
So this graphic scheme shows us how that possibly happened. So they say that around 13.73 billion years ago, um, at the moment of singularity, that hot, dense condition expanded and still continues to expand up to this moment, up to, up to today. So uh, the Big Bang Theory is one of the most important um, theories that we have explaining the origin of the universe. The Big Bang model is actually a comprehensive explanation from a, for a broad range of observed phenomena. So this includes the abundance of light elements, the cosmic microwave background radiation, the large-scale structure, and Hubble's law. The, farthers, the farther away galaxies are, the faster they are moving away from Earth. So again, going back to this representation of the Big Bang, it says that from that moment of singularity, from that moment of expansion, from that hot and dense um, condition, matter and energy continuously to expand through time. And they say that the farther the galaxies are away uh, from us, from our planet, the faster that they are moving um, as well. Now, cosmic microwave background radiation is one of the major evidences that this uh, model of the Big Bang actually is accurate. This diagram um, also explains to us um, how the Big Bang might have happened. So here, this is the moment of singularity, the moment of expansion of that hot, dense material. And then as time goes by, all of these things happen. So the, uh, approximately, the Big Bang expansion has been happening for 13 point. 7 billion years. So during the dark ages, nothing much is happening in the universe. And then after 400 million years from the, um, from the expansion is the development of the first stars. Then uh, those stars eventually change, nuclear reactions might have happened, um, all those physical concepts, all those physical um, activities might have occurred. And then around this time, it will be the development of those um, stars into galaxies and planets. And then they continuously to ex continuously expand, evolve, and develop. And then right now, this is where we are, okay? So we see here that those uh, first stars might have changed and evolved and become galaxies and other celestial objects. And then here, dark energy continuously um, to accelerate in their expansion. I recommend that you watch this video, The Beginning of Everything, The Big Bang. I will provide the link in the description below. So who proposed The Big Bang? It was actually Monsignor George Henry Joseph Edouard Lomet, who was actually a Belgian priest, mathematician, astronomer, and physics professor. He proposed what, he, what became known as the Big Bang Theory, although he initially called it Hypothesis of the Primeval Atom. The, pre, the framework for the model um, heavily relied on Albert Einstein's general relativity. The Big Bang Theory is supported by several major pieces of evidence. Um, so, all of, all of those evidence are pointing out that the universe is continuously and uh, constantly expanding. Uh, the first one is the redshift phenomenon. So, it happens when light coming from an object uh, is moving away from the observer. So, they, um, they tend to fall on the red uh, spectrum line. Okay, so if, an, if a light-emitting object is moving away from the observer, they appear red uh, on the spectrum. Uh, the opposite of that is the blue shift, wherein a light-emitting object tends to appear blue to the observer, or they are found along the blue spectrum line um, if they are moving uh, closer to the observer. So again, so the spectrum of radiation received by an, by an observer shifts if the source of radiation or the source of the light emitting object is moving relative to the observers. So in our case, the observers are us humans or the astronauts um, studying the celestial bodies. Um, and please note no, that because of um, uh, the expansion of the universe, celestial objects are always moving. So if um, observers watching an object moving away, moving away, uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see its spectral lines shifted towards longer wavelengths, so they tend to appear red, okay? or they have a red shift. While an approaching object or moving towards the observer uh, are shifted to the shorter wavelengths, okay? shorter web wavelengths of the spectrum line. Um, distant galaxies 
um, show large red shift. Okay, so the the farther um, the farther that they are from us, it means that they are receding or moving at an enormous speed, okay, very fast, uh, and these are known as cosmological red shifts. Red shift can be observed by uh, the following image. Those um, galaxies that are circle red are, so, are said to be turning red because they are moving farther away from us. So cosmological red, red shift is seen due to the expansion of the universe. It means they are turning red because they are moving away from us. Okay? So it also shows that uh, red shift corresponds to the rate of increase of their distance from Earth or from us, the observers. Another evidence um, of the Big Bang is the cosmic microwave background radiation. In 1964, two scientists named Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson discovered a pocket of heat that is thought to be the remnant of the heat wave caused by the Big Bang. It was a major development in modern physical cosmology and it was actually an accidental discover discovery by these two radio, American radio astronomers as they experimented with the Holmdel horn antenna. So this was the image uh, that was uh, created based from their observation. This is uh, an all-sky picture of the infant universe um, and it shows us the, uh, the image reveals 13.77 billion year old temperature fluctuations as shown in color differences. It means that the hotter um, regions of the universe uh, were given the colored uh, red and yellow, while the cold, colder pockets or colder regions of the universe were um, shown here are in blue and green, col uh, lighter blue coloration. They say that those hot air pockets of the infant universe eventually corresponds to the seeds uh, of matter that eventually become the galaxies. So this is what uh, what was concluded from the ex from the accidental discovery of. Wilson and Penzias in 1964. Their discovery was important because it proposed a hot early universe, still from the Big Bang, um, and it was an evidence against the rival steady state uh, theory. We will get, uh, we will learn more about this theory in our next video. So, um, Wilson and Penzias um, were eventually awarded with a Nobel Prize for their discovery. Um, of the cosmic microwave background radiation. Side note, their discovery was con considered accidental because they did not intend to discover uh, the cosmic microwave background radiation. They just keep on getting these readings from their instrument and they thought that it was just dirty. So they, they tried to clean their instrument. They tried to clean the, the, ma the machines that they're using. But no matter how many times they clean it, they, still on they keep on getting the same reading. So that led them to study and look into it deeper and eventually they discovered that those were actually um, the remnants of the Big Bang that happened 13.77 billion years ago. In order to understand what happened after the Big Bang, scientists and engineers built this uh, 17 miles long or 27 kilometers long tunnel called the Large Hadron Collider. It is found at CERN and CERN is the French uh, acronym for European Organization of Nuclear Research. So what they do there is to smash together atoms at very high speeds and see what happens uh, after that, okay? What the products of that interaction. So they do this by simulating the incredibly hot and dense conditions that follows the Big Bang, okay? So hoping to understand it better. Uh, and the, the photo shown here is one of the many detectors of the Large Hadron Collider, and this is called the Compact Muon Solenoid Detector. I also recommend that you watch this video entitled The Cosmic Afterglow. I will provide the link in the description below. Note that without any evidence associated with the earliest instant of the expansion, the Big Bang Theory cannot and does not provide an explanation for such initial condition. It means that the Big Bang Theory can only explain what happened after the singularity or what happened after the expansion of that um, hot primal um, initial condition. It cannot provide explanation to what happened before the expansion. It cannot even explain why it happened. 
So it just describes and explains the general evolution of the universe since that instant of expansion. I also recommend that you look into the following videos from PBS Space, uh, What Happened Before the Big Bang, with the, with the link in the description below, and did, I, did Time Start at the Big Bang? Still, the link in the description below. These are very good um, videos explaining further um, about the nature of the Big Bang Theory. That ends our video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. Till next time, goodbye!